Straight Talk with award-winning journalist Lloyd Geit. Thank you so much for joining us on Straight Talk. How are you? You got put out of elementary school because you were, you were pretty bad. Straight you Talk. Bad. Politics. Equal employment opportunity commission. Race. She's a dark skin girl. Straight Talk. Money Matters. International News. Let's talk about colonialism. Straight Talk. Celebrity interviews. Sports. Straight Talk with award-winning journalist Lloyd Geit. Hello and welcome to Straight Talk. I'm your host, Lloyd Geit. On today's show, famed photographer Bob Gomel. He has taken the pictures of so many people, including President Kennedy, Muhammad Ali, Malcolm X, the Beatles, and many, many more. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. How are you? My great pleasure. I'm fine. Thank you. You are virtually a history book. Huh. That's really what you and your photos are. How do you respond to that? Well, I was very fortunate. Uh, the decade of the 60s became iconic. I had nothing to do with that except that I was there and in a position with Life magazine to be upfront and personal with a lot of these very famous people that you just named. Now, you worked for Life magazine for yes. 10 years. Correct. You did a lot of their covers. I did several, yes. What was that experience like, working with Life? Well, it's rather interesting. Um, Life magazine was the mecca for photojournalism, picture stories. That was my dream since I was 10 years old. And to have arrived at that through a fluke of circumstance and to have been able to fulfill the dreams, that's all I ever really wanted. Uh, I was thrilled every time I went out with my camera to try and bring back something that would be of uh, consequence and go beyond uh, the, the moment. Now, you said you were 10 years old when Correct. you started this. Tell me a little bit about that. You picked up a camera at 10? Well, there were no cameras, but my science teacher was an amateur photographer, and I sat next to the aisle on the wall adjacent to my chair was this magnificent photograph in sepia tone of a cobblestone street with a manhole cover in the middle and a pigeon. And I believe it was the first photograph I ever took notice of and I thought it was magnificent, and I stared at it for a whole semester. It turned out that that gentleman, Mr. Fields by name, had a photography class with, which met for one hour once a week, and I joined his photo club. At 10 years old? At 10 years old, and I was hooked. But we had no cameras and, and, and no means to take pictures immediately. And finally, the, the war ended. My parents were not too keen on my interest in spending what to them seemed like an awful lot of money uh, for a camera that where I could control uh, the results, the aperture and the shutter and so forth. So I got a job delivering groceries on the hilly streets of the Bronx in the wintertime. Because you grew up in New York. You were actually born in New York. I was born in Manhattan and grew up in the Bronx. And so I was delivering uh, uh, groceries on this uh, delivery bike, uh, going up hills in the on snow. On a delivery bike. <laughs> yes, and I earned myself $83.76, I'll never forget it. And I went down to the prominent, uh, preeminent camera store in Manhattan, which was called Willoughby's, and I clunked it down for the first um, uh, post-war uh, two and a quarter reflex uh, that was made called a Ciroflex. And uh, then I convinced my parents to abandon one of the closets in our apartment. For and, a dark room? Uh, allow me to make a dark room there. It was not an uh, elegant thing. I had an exhaust fan there to breathe. But uh, I basically uh, spent uh, my entire high school evenings in that closet, in, in the dark room, processing and learning my trade from trial and error. There were no formal classes in photography. There was a magazine called uh, Popular Photography and a columnist named Joseph Folds, who I would read every month. And by trial and error, I would, I would process my film and realize how I could make it better. And so by the time I was a senior in high school, I was pretty accomplished. I was the editor of the yearbook. I was on the school newspaper. And uh, so uh, I, I was on a career bent for uh, journalism, 
but not as a photographer, uh, perhaps as a writer. I, I had no idea I could make a living with a camera. And, uh, but your photos speak as if you are writing, and that's the well, interesting thing. <laughs> Do not go away. We will be back with Straight Talk after these messages. Straight Talk. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. All right, guys, we gotta be smarter about what we bite on, okay? I want everyone to go outside. We're gonna run Red Rover on three. What about you, Tony? I'm gonna run around in circles, flat my arms, and make engine noises, like this. When it comes to playing, we kids are the pros. We're eating right, too. We fuel up. To play 60. If your school doesn't have a program, be a leader. Start one. Click today and join, join the movement. movement. Talking to your kids about finishing school isn't easy, just necessary. Go to boostup.org for materials that can help. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy winning the US Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism. And welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm your host, Lloyd Geit. We are talking with famed photographer Bob Gomel. He is quite a photographer. You've probably seen his works all over the world. Okay, now you're in high school and you're learning all this stuff about photography. Yeah. Then what do you do? Well, I went to NYU. And fortunately, our school basketball team played at Madison Square Garden, and those games were covered by all the New York papers. So I got to know, oh my gosh, all the press photographers in New York from the Daily News, from the Daily Mirror, from the United Press, which was called ACME, Associated Press, the World Telegram, and on and on and on. And they were very uh, uh, nice to me and allowed me to accompany them on their evening shifts. <laughs> and so for four years in the evening, I would go around with the New York press photographer and learn the tricks of the trade. And that was fascinating to me. And boy, did you learn the tricks of the trade. Oh, you my goodness, went yes. on to Life Magazine where you worked for 10 years. Let's, I wanna talk about some of these photos. I'm yes. gonna throw some names to you and I want just your, your comments. Right. The Beatles. The Beatles, the whitest, white people I had ever seen in my life. When they got off that plane, it, you needed sunglasses for the reflection that was coming off their skin. And uh, that was later reinforced when you go to London and you see a, a sunny day and people are laying out in the park because they're, they're so pale white. It's incredible <laughs> compared to uh, uh, what we're accustomed to here. But they were uh, extremely polite and um, uh, out, they, they enjoyed very much the beginning experience in America as, as, as much as they could because they were um, besieged by, by our uh, uh, adoring fans. Mm -hmm. And so they had to be sequestered everywhere they went. And uh, <clears throat> in fact, uh, in order for us to do the pictures uh, of the Beatles in the pool, which are uh, here on display, we had to uh, employ uh, a friend to get us a private residence and, and, and remove them from the hotel where they were staying and have a little privacy so we could do a photo session. What was that like, being around the Beatles? Everybody's crazy for the Beatles. Uh -huh. And here you are with them, right. photographing them. Well, you know what? Uh, no big deal, huh? <laughs> well, I was not enamored by that. Maybe I was a year or two older. Uh, 
I enjoyed their music, but I, I was on the job, and uh, to me it was, uh, uh, it was, it was, it was business. Uh, uh, I made some suggestions, they happily followed them, and uh, things happened. Uh, I got a particularly uh, big kick out of watching these well-dressed young ladies uh, trying to outwit the uh, security uh, forces and to, even to get, get at as them. <laughs> close as their suite uh, in the hallways of the Doville. There's a picture that you must, you must take a look at of these well-dressed ladies pushing and clawing through the uh, uh, police security guards to get at them. Another name, yes, President sir. John Kennedy. He was uh, more than just somebody you took his picture. Yes, we became friends because I had spent a good part of his campaign with him for months and months and months. And so we knew each other, certainly he knew me on a first name basis. And the best story I have is when he finally became president elect and people were uh, interviewing for cabinet positions. They were, he had a brownstone in, George, in Georgetown and people would be getting out of limousines and walking a few steps and it was a very uh, boring assignment for <laughs> me and the other of uh, the world press. But finally, Saturday morning, Pierre Salinger, his press secretary, came out and said, fellas, there are no appointments today. Uh, please, please uh, go home. Go home. <laughs> and everybody got permission to go home except two of us, Jim Atherton, who's just recently passed from U uh, UPI, and myself from Life, because Life closed on Saturday evening, and it was worth it to them to have me stand outside the door in the freezing cold. But Kennedy didn't think so. He opened his window, which was at eye level, and he said, Jim, Bob, come on inside. And in we went, and they set up TV trays. They had the Army-Navy football game, and they brought us a steak and baked potato. And the next thing I knew, Jim was shaking me at the shoulder. And I woke up, and he said, Navy won. The president's left the room. I think we better go outside again. <laughs> I fell asleep on the president. Shame on you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> and the president never let me forget it. Whenever he'd see me at a press conference or something, he'd, he'd wave his hand at me like that, and I'd get red in the face. Wow. Yeah. We're going to take another break, but do yeah. not go anywhere. We will be back with Straight Talk and Bob Gomel after these messages. Straight Talk. Life's this hard? It's no wonder 7,000 students drop out every school day. Visit BoostUp.org and help kids in your community stay in school. everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Works every time. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. Did you know that getting up and getting active for just 60 minutes a day is all it takes to help you get stronger, look better, and feel great? Or that fresh fruits and veggies aren't just healthier and crunchier, they can taste better too? Eating better and getting more active is easier than you think. Yeah! Keep watching for some fun and easy ways to discover the magic of healthy living in your life. America, let's get healthy together! <laughs> Today is 
60 minutes of physical activity a day and eating well can help get your child healthy. Get ideas. Get involved. Get going at letsmove.gov. That's letsmove.gov. And welcome back to Straight Talk. I'm your host, Lloyd Geit. We are talking with Bob Gomel, the famed photographer who is really a piece of history himself. Let's talk about the funeral of yes. John Kennedy. You covered him for many years. Yes, indeed. But you covered the funeral. Yes. What was that like? Well, emotionally, I was able to put that aside and concentrate on how to make a picture that w would convey how I felt inside without myself reacting uh, in, in any physical way. Uh, and I was uh, able to do that. In fact, uh, I was able to secure some rather unique vantage points uh, <clears throat> from on top of the Capitol as the caisson moved by. And then uh, when he was uh, lying in state in the rotunda of the Capitol, to go up on a higher balcony and look down on that sea of blue. And that's become one of my all-time favorite pictures. Let's switch gears a little bit. Something's yes. fun. Muhammad Ali. Yes. Oh, my goodness. What a great guy. Tell me about the photographs of him. And he, there's well, one with your son yes, sitting he, in his lap. You know, he was uh, one person to the outside world, to the press, and he was quite another person uh, privately. And I want to show you the duality in two examples, uh, not necessarily in sequence, but one when we were returning from reviewing the, the Broadway uh, play The Great White Hope. He, Ali was a, a, a magic fan, magician fan, so he stopped in a uh, magic shop and he bought himself, now picture this, is 1968 or 69, a uh, a telephone with a with a coil cord and a thing and a and a bell mechanism for his for his arm, <laughs> and w he was staying at the old Taft Hotel, which held about thirty people in the elevator with the metal gates and an operator, and so the, the three of us, the writer and Ali and myself, got in the elevator, and he makes it ring, makes the phone ring, and he pulls the receiver out, and everybody, of course, in the elevator knew who the champ was, and he proceeded to have an short animated conversation and he puts the phone down we get off at the first express stop the doors close and the three of us fell on the floor left because we knew what everybody in that elevator must be thinking <laughs> but that's the kind of guy he was with my family I on the way to uh, we uh, he rematched with Sonny Liston was in Lewiston Maine and uh, so I elected to take my boys and my German Shepherd and my wife to, to go up there because we were going to be there in Jack Parr Hotel uh, mm -hmm. for the duration. And at that time, they didn't have disposable nipples for babies. Uh, one of my boys was very young. Uh, but Ali and his brother kept like a kosher kitchen. So they went out of their way to boil those uh, nipples. Mm -hmm. and for your sons. They took such, <laughs> they were so gracious. And of course, that picture of Ali with my oldest son is, is priceless. He was, he was uh, and his brother were, were so gracious and kind. Uh, uh, I have nothing but the f but fondest memories of that uh, man. And there's even one more follow up, which I, I may be running over on, but many, many years later, uh, Ali was here in Houston, and at this point, he had serious medical problems, mm. but he was signing autographs. People would pay to go to Brown Center and to, and he was humbled over and signing autographs. And, and my son walks up with that particular big that frame picture. picture, and Ali looks at it, and he lights up. He, he got 20 years younger, and his disease separated, and he, and he got so excited, he got out of his chair, and he went up and down the line, showing all the people the who picture. were waiting that picture. And then he got back to his seat and looked at my son again and looked back at the picture and looked up at my son again and said, you still ugly. <laughs> That's a great story. We're going to take another break. Do not go away. <laughs> we will be back with more Straight Talk. Straight Talk.
hungry? Yeah. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Turning a 20-foot wall into a canvas takes vision. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. So what's it going to be? Uh, we could ride bikes, skating, movies, zoo, whatever you guys want to do. Can we just do this? Yeah. We could just do this. The smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. <laughs> Take time to be a dad today. Hey, I'm Demi Lovato. Bullying is never okay. Well, what are you gonna do? Well, here's an idea. Go to teensagainstbullying.org. The end of bullying begins with you. So join the movement. <laughs> Guys, we gotta be smarter about what we bite on, okay? I want everyone to go outside. We're gonna run Red Rover on three. What about you, Tony? I'm gonna run around in circles, flap my arms, and make engine noises like this. When it comes to playing, we kids are the pros. We're eating right, too. We fuel up to play 60. If your school doesn't have a program, be a leader. Start one. Click today and join, join the movement. movement. Talking to your kids about finishing school isn't easy, just necessary. Go to boostup.org for materials that can help. In 1977, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. The odds of that same boy winning the US Open twice, one in 1.2 billion. The odds of him having a child diagnosed with autism, one in 110. Ernie Else encourages you to learn the signs of autism. And welcome back to Straight Talk. My special guest is famed photographer Bob Gomel. I saw a very young Dustin Hoffman. Mm -hmm. He was living in Washington Square Park at the time and taking ballet lessons along with his uh, then wife. And that's when uh, he had just finished making the movie The Graduate. Oh my and, God. And I don't even think it was released yet, but or just about to be released at any rate, life assigned me to spend a few days with him. And uh, I, I photographed him uh, doing ballet in his apartment and, and doing chin-ups on, on, on the uh, door frames. But the interesting uh, time was uh, once when we went to a sculptor who was making his likeness in clay and he posed uh, alongside uh, the sculpture. And then, of course, the sculpture did something very naughty. He, fo fo he, he fashioned a piece of clay into a, uh, a, a penis. <laughs> and we had those pictures were, uh, uh, not on display. But the interesting thing was that Dustin didn't know if he was ever going to get another job again. So he was collecting unemployment from the state of New York and going to the unemployment office. And I photographed him, of course, uh, collecting his check, his weekly check from the other. But here's what was so fascinating. The studio provided a stretched limousine for him to go to, to go. unemployment. Now, the interesting thing about a lot of the photographs that are on display is that many of them have never been seen before. Yes. How did that happen? You know, the editing process was such that uh, 
layouts were made, and you might have had a wonderful horizontal image, but they needed a vertical image, and, 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 and so on. And there was also the timing factor on fast-breaking stories. There were so many factors which uh, precluded every wonderful picture to go in. And of course, there was also the fallibility of the picture editors who were under great pressure all the time to go through uh, these tiny little 35 millimeter contacts mm -hmm. and be able to pick the most meaningful. Uh, so your files are full of pictures that still today have never been seen. Well, uh, yes, that's exactly right. We shot huh, thousands and thousands and thousands of pictures. But you're still photographing. You're oh, actually yes. still taking pictures on a day-to-day -day basis, oh, right? Oh, yes. Well, uh, my wife and I travel. We love to go to places where the civilization is not as developed as, as, as it is in the Western world, excuse me, and to capture the lifestyle uh, of, of the indigenous people who, who live there. We just returned from the ancient kingdoms of uh, Vietnam and Cambodia and Laos and Thailand, and it was a wonderful experience. And, and those photos reflect that too. The photos are fabulous. Well, thank you. We have pictures on the wall that are as recent as this past May. Wow. And uh, I hope to, we're going to uh, Myanmar in January and possibly to southern India in November. Wow. So uh, I'm still shooting. Well, that's a good thing. That's good for you and that's good for all of us who can appreciate your photographs. I want to thank you. This has been such an enlightening um, interview. And I also want you to follow up on that book now <laughs> because we need to have those as coffee table books to see all these gorgeous photographs. It's been my great pleasure. <laughs> We will see you next week on Straight Talk. We've been talking with famed photographer Bob Gomel. His works are absolutely incredible. And we will see you next week with yet another exciting show. Take care. Straight Talk with award-winning journalist Lloyd Geit. Thank you so much for joining us on Straight Talk. How are you? 